The left picture shows what happens when there's no stress control tube at the cable. The behavior is better explained using lines of equal voltage rather than lines of electric field. Lines of equal voltage are perpendicular to lines of electric field. They are just different ways of describing the same phenomena. At any two points on the same lines of equal voltage, the voltage difference between the two points is zero. There is no voltage difference. A 90% voltage line means that the voltage along all points in this line is equal to 90% of the phase to ground voltage. As long as the grounded copper screen is not removed, all the lines of equal voltage within the XLP insulation will be evenly distributed. But once the grounded copper screen is removed, these lines will begin to spread out and all concentrated in a small region. Take for example the 90% voltage line. When the grounded copper screen has not been removed, the insulation thickness of this voltage line to the grounded copper screen may be say 6 mm. When this voltage line begins to spread out, you can visually see that the 6 mm insulation clearance from ground cannot be maintained and will be much less than 6 mm. You now have a situation of less insulation thickness for the same 90% voltage line. The cable will eventually fail. The solution is to somehow make all the lines of equal voltage stretch out further towards the cable lug. This is achieved by the use of stress control tube, which has electrical properties to stretch out these lines of equal voltage. This slide shows the guideline for the length of stress control tube for heat string type cable termination. In a shutdown maintenance, it is possible to visually locate the upper and lower section of the stress control tube from the indentation at the anti-tracking tube of the cable termination. The length between the upper and lower section of this indentation is equal to the length of the stress control tube. This is a simple and must-do item during every shutdown maintenance. Do not be surprised to discover a 6.6 kV stress control tube used for a 22 kV operating voltage. This slide shows the cable already stripped back to reveal the copper screen, semiconducting layer and XLP insulation. The exact dimensions of the cutback will have slight differences from the various OEM but will essentially have this basic form. This slide is to highlight the application of the stress relief mastic at the interface of the XLP insulation and semiconducting layer. The purpose of this mastic is to eliminate the air pockets that will be trapped at the interface when the stress control tube is heat shrink over this area. The air pocket will produce PD along the circumference of the interface. This will eventually lead to a puncture through the XLPE insulation. This slide shows the application of the stress control tube, which is after the application of the stress relief mastic at the interface of the XLPE insulation and semiconducting layer. The length of the stress control tube increases with operating voltage. A common mistake is to install the stress control tube too near the breakout boot. This will create difficulty to achieve the required clearance of the stress control tube to ground and clearance between stress control tube from different phases. It is better to install the stress control tube as near as possible towards the cable lock while still maintaining the BIL clearance. BIL or basic insulation level is to cater to transient over voltage from lightning, switching 
and electrical faults. This slide shows the last step for heat string type cable termination, which is the application of the anti-tracking tube. This tube will conceal the stress control tube and extends from the cable lock to the breakout boot. The anti-tracking tube has a popular red color as commonly used by many OEM, example, Raycam. <laughs>